All right. Nice to see some familiar names here in the attendee list. We will just get started. I will do a brief welcome here. Um, good afternoon. My name is Greg Fansler, and I serve as Executive Director of Engagement Alumni Relations here at Missouri State. I'm a brand new bear coming up on my sixth month and glad to be here in Springfield. I'd like to welcome you all, alumni and friends, um, for the third edition of our 10-part series, Conversations with the College. Now, we created this series to give alumni and community members the opportunity to connect with and hear from our college deans and the vice president of student affairs. Our deans and VP of student affairs are excited to share with you what is happening on campus today. We want to celebrate some of our recent achievements and we wanna paint the picture for what the future holds for Missouri State. Through these conversations and this conversation series, our senior administrators will also illustrate the impact alumni and friends have had on their respective colleges, as well as the academic units as part of our Onward Upward campaign. This impact, transla this impact um, translates into uh, new buildings, and scholarships and professorships and much more. And we wanna thank all of you who tuned in today to hear from Dean Matthews to hear more about the College of Humanities and Public Affairs. I'd like to thank Angie Rowe, our Advancements Strategic Communications and Content Specialist for her help in coordinating this series. And I would like to now turn the attention to our special guest and, uh, and guest of honor, Dr. Dean Victor Matthews. Dean Matthews came to Missouri State in 1984 after serving a couple stops in South Carolina, including stays in Clemson and Anderson College. He has authored or co-authored 19 books and has published approximately 100 articles. Dean Matthews has been in the Dean's office since 2001, serving seven year stint as Associate Dean, briefly serving a year a stint as Interim Dean and officially becoming the Dean of this college in 2009. He is the second longest serving Dean uh, and is our only Bear alumni Dean um, and of the seven academic deans um, in our college. Uh, Dean Matthews, it's a pleasure to be with you here this afternoon. We really appreciate your time, um, and we're excited to hear uh, what's in store uh, for uh, um, in the College of Humanities and Public Affairs. Uh, also, thanks for giving, thanks for giving me the opportunity to, to uh, talk to you and, and to our alumni and friends. Um, as you can see in the first slide that I have on the screen, uh, this is the College of Humanities and Public Affairs, and we are housed in beautiful Strong Hall on the western end of the campus. Uh, it is a building that we entered in 1998 after its construction, uh, and it's named for Tom Strong and his family, who were the major donors uh, in making this possible. We've always been very appreciative of the fact that we have a home where all of the college could be housed, except for just a couple of units. Uh, so what I'll be doing today is talking to you about uh, the college, what, where we are right now, uh, and some of the things that we hope to do in the future with the help of the Onward Upward Capital Campaign. I look forward to hearing your comments after I do my thing and uh, I'll see what we have to say. So moving on, just to give you some idea of the, of the various departments that are housed in this college. Uh, these are traditional social science and humanities uh, disciplines uh, for the most part. I do have military science as a, a unit within the college, uh, although they are, of course, a minor and not a major, and they can, be they can be attached to any major in the university. And I have one unit that's housed in the Washington, D.C. area, Defense and Strategic Studies, uh, and they are a, only a graduate program uh, with a master's and most recently added a, 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 a professional doctorate in that area. They are the only non-healthcare related professional doctorate in the university. And they've started great guns with that already and will have their first graduate this spring. As you can see the flag display uh, that I have on the screen, that was added a couple of years ago on each of the various levels uh, of the uh, atrium area. And what it does is it reinforces the fact that our college is primarily interested in what, what I would say is culture. Um, we are studying the politics, the history, the economics, the religion, the philosophy, uh, 
all the various aspects of culture uh, throughout the world. And these flags represent all the various students from all the countries that are now taking classes at Missouri State University. And we're happy to have them as part of our display here. Uh, the departments vary in size, as you might imagine. Some are some majors are more popular than others, quite frankly. Uh, criminology, for instance, is the most popular uh, of the majors in, the, in, in our college with almost 500 majors. Uh, the numbers that I have on the screen are from last fall. Uh, and as you might imagine, these numbers go up and they go down, uh, but they're, they're pretty standard, somewhere around 1,300, 1,400 total students at uh, both undergraduate and graduate taking courses in our programs. Uh, our college is very research intensive uh, in the sense that we write a lot of books. Uh, and every year I'm able to showcase uh, the new monographs that are being published as well as articles and, and book chapters and so on. Uh, the four that I have displayed here are uh, the most recent ones that have come out. Uh, and I would highly encourage any of you to have a look and see if you can get a copy of one of these books. Uh, Brooks Blevins book on the history of the Ozarks is now finished. He did a trilogy uh, that allows you to, to basically learn from the earliest settlements to the current day. Uh, and of, of course, because we have people in lots of different disciplines, you'll see books that relate to lots of different topics. Uh, for instance, Bill Meadows' book on the first code talkers uh, talk about the Navajo who were the code talkers during the Second World War. And actually, there were some of the First World War as well. Uh, very important to our success because they had a code based upon their language, which was never broken uh, during the course of the war. And that really made a difference. Now, what I want to do is to spend the rest of my time talking about areas of growth that we hope to expand in our college. Uh, to a certain extent, this is based upon the addition of new faculty with their new energies and new ideas and new disciplinary areas. Uh, and to a certain extent, ways in which we can greater, have a greater impact on students and get them more involved in activities that will then have an impact on their later careers. A lot of people say, well, what can you do with a history major, or a philosophy major, a religious studies major, or an anthropology major? And I can say almost anything, except for, of course, healthcare and, and the hard sciences, uh, because our graduates find their way into business and into government and into the churches and lots of different places uh, that they will have an impact. And so what I want to do is to provide them with as broad and enriched an, an enterprise while they're here as possible. So one area that has recently grown is in economics. Uh, we have added two behavioral economists, and this is a little different for economy, for economics. Uh, they're looking at the fact that people are not always rational in their choices. Uh, it's not a matter of just drawing a graph and expecting people to conform to them. And so what they have done is to begin the process of doing behavioral research using primarily students as the basis for their research. What they're hoping to do is to create a behavioral economics computer lab dedicated to that research. Um, and as you can see on the screen here, what they're hoping to do is to create one that has these blinders between the various computer screens so that everybody is individualized in the research and, and nobody is being influenced by the other. Uh, this model is actually from another university, and it's one they're hoping to create here, uh, and they will be raising money uh, to try and do that, to renovate the space they currently have, and to put this kind of thing together. Uh, they've had good grant support to this, to this point, and this would be something they would hope then to get um, someone to provide, or some people to provide them with some extra money, uh, and of course, this would be a naming opportunity. Something that's very recent in the college, and this is in the Department of Criminology, uh, is what's called mock trial competitions. We hired a new faculty member last year. She had experience with this. And now within just two years, uh, she has put together a team that has been very successful in competitions. Just two weeks ago, they were in Memphis and they won several different levels of competition. Uh, and this is great for someone, uh, for a team that's only just gotten started. Uh, they have high hopes for this to continue. It's somewhat similar to what is done with the debate team, 
Uh, but in this particular case, it's with, within a courtroom setting uh, and looking at particular kinds of trial aspects. Uh, very good preparation for those who are going to law school or going into criminal justice, or quite frankly, we actually have some members of the, of the debate team who are also members of this competition. So it's crossed across the university as far as discipline is concerned. Something else that's been going on for many years, and one thing that I actually was involved with, uh, is archaeological and ethnographic field schools. Many years ago, back in the mid-90s, I took students to Israel to dig, and we continue to have many more local uh, archaeological field schools uh, where we examine uh, Native American settings, and most recently, and this coming summer, they're going to be going back to the Phoenix Quarry, which is over in Ash Grove, uh, where they will be examining, once again, the, um, the company town, or the remains of it, uh, so that we can get some idea of that, of the history of the people who live there, uh, so we don't have to go way, way back, but we can look at something maybe a century or so old, and get some idea of how they lived, what kind of conditions they lived in, and then something about the work of the quarry. Uh, ethnographic uh, field schools involve taking students, for instance, to the Native American areas in, in Oklahoma, living with the Native Americans and hearing from them about their experience and their culture. And what we're looking for, of course, are some help, uh, some help for people who are involved with these because it does have a cost and we would love to be able to uh, provide them with scholarships that would help them to do that. Another competitive team that we have, this one based in political science, is the Model UN competition. Every year, for many, many years, they have been sending students, uh, usually to Chicago, uh, for their competitions, uh, where they will in engage with other students from around the country. Uh, and what they do is, as in the United Nations, they represent different nations, uh, and their, their delegation is given awards if they distinguish themselves. In the most recent competition, uh, they won numerous awards, including the Outstanding Delegation, which would be one beyond any team found throughout the United States. So very distinguished. But again, of course, there's a cost in terms of getting them there, providing them with what they need while they're there. Uh, so any help that we can provide for that would be much appreciated. This is one area that I want to point to because it was started by an alumnus. Several years ago, uh, one of the alumni from the military science department uh, came back and he, want, he came to me on the day actually that we had a new commander. And he said, I want to go talk to that guy. And in the course of that conversation, what came out was the creation of the ROTC Ring Endowment Fund. He provided a, a, a uh, initial gift of about $50,000, and that has begun the process of providing each graduate, as they're commissioned as first lieutenants, with not only their gold bar, but with a graduation ring, much like what you find in one of the military academies, uh, so that they have that singular connection back to the university and to the, to the core. Uh, and as, you, as some of you may know, this has been a very successful program going back to the early 50s. And they've actually had, I believe it's 14 or 15 major, uh, well, generals who have come out of that program in the course of their career. So we have really contributed to the military over the years. And this is a wonderful way of giving back. As a matter of fact, I'm a member of the Founders Club here. And my $1,000 that I give every year is designated for this particular fund because I see it as integral to that connection between these individuals who are going out and serving our country. Something else that is, I think, integral to the, to the work of this college is study away. You cannot really study a culture unless you have been embedded into it. They need to be able to walk the ground. When I went to Israel, the best thing I ever did was literally to walk the ground. Before I ever wrote about these people, I wanted to see how they lived, what they experienced. And when I was digging, I got some idea of what they had left behind for us. But every year, I provide $15,000 from university fund, from the college funds, to help sponsor scholarships for students who are going all over the world. And by the way, of course, that means there's a cost. Uh, 
if you were trying to go to China or to Australia, obviously we're talking about big bucks for the airplane. Uh, more, more local kinds of things. We do have in-state in study away programs in Chicago and other places. Uh, but what I'm really looking for is the hope, hoping for an endowed fund that would provide scholarships uh, for students who want to go wherever they would like to go to enhance their understanding of the cultures that they're studying. Uh, I've committed the college to that, and I hope that uh, we can find other people who are interested in providing some additional assistance for that program. And to give you, well, one more thing, uh, let's, let's talk about the Defense and Strategic Studies Department one more time. Uh, this program, because they're a graduate program, is a bit expensive. But what we find is, even though they are a little expensive, they are a real bargain when it's compared to, to uh, similar programs in the, uh, in the Washington, D.C. area. If you want to go to Johns Hopkins or to George Washington, you'd be paying three or four times as much to get the same kind of instruction, excellent instruction that's provided by this program. Uh, and every year, the uh, graduates go in, well, basically, they, they're all employed. Uh, they work in various government agencies or for private industry uh, and are having a real impact in providing our country with the kind of strategic studies that are necessary to meet threats like we're currently finding ourselves with in Europe with the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, as you can see in the picture here, we have uh, Senator, Brunt, uh, Senator Blunt, who was at the most recent graduation for these graduates. Uh, and as I said earlier, we're going to have our first doctoral student graduating in this, this spring graduating class. And there's 41 others who are on in the pipeline. So we'll be seeing this as a regular feature of their graduation ceremony. What I'm, what I'm pitching for, obviously, are scholarships to help people matric matriculate into this program and be able to make an impact in the future for our country. Internships. Those of you who are business persons know that internships are perhaps maybe the most valuable thing that a student can do because it gives them real work experience. It gives them an opportunity to be embedded again into a situation that they hope eventually to work in. Uh, but many of these, especially in our college, are in nonprofit agencies. And as a result, these are unfunded uh, internships. Uh, for students who are already paying off student loans uh, and may have a job or have a family, it's very difficult for them to take on the time necessary to do an internship, which is unpaid. Uh, what I'm making a pitch for is providing a fund that would provide scholarships for these uh, students to defray some of the costs of doing an internship while at the same time benefiting from that experience. Uh, here's a list, for instance, of the various places where our students have been uh, in internship situations. Uh, they vary from government agencies to private law firms to police departments to, uh, well, you get some idea of having a look at the list. And this is only a partial list. Uh, it's a very important program, and I hope that down the road this is something that we'd be able to do uh, for them. Now, the last slide I've got here is basically for your purposes. Uh, if you have not connected with the college for a while, uh, I encourage you to have a look at our website. I have an online calendar. If you're in a local area and you want to come to one of our events, it'll be listed there. If you want to learn more about what our faculty and students have been doing, I have a link here to our blog. Uh, we are always featuring our faculty and our students in their various things. Uh, and I hope that you'll be able to keep up with those, those events. Um, so let me encourage you to do that. And I'll stop at this point and turn it back to Greg to begin the, the interactive process. All right. Thank you, Dean Matthews. And, um, and thank you for your time in that presentation and giving us a flavor of what's happening here in the College of Humanities and Public Affairs. I can tell you, um, you know, not only was this opportunity to come here and serve Bear Nation really exciting for me, but when I read more about what the mission is of this university and its investment in public affairs, and your college dotes that name, um, talk about, the, um, if you can, the general education you provide and the partnership you may have with the seven other academic um, colleges 
on campus and, and how we educate. And you've spoke to this broadly um, in ensuring that that students that leave here have have a um, you know a well-rounded, diverse education experience. Right. Well, the people who are watching us know the value of general education, maybe not when they were doing it, but certainly in since that time, I think they, they've come to appreciate the fact that the university provides them with that broad range of courses in gen ed uh, that takes them away from maybe what they're focusing on with their major, but at the same time provides a foundation for them to read and to speak and to think uh, in a critical manner. Uh, mm -hmm. That's very much the, the course of the, of the courses that we're providing in this college, uh, where 63% of our coursework is general education. Uh, it's a big deal. Uh, we provide that for students all across the university. Uh, and I, I'd like to think that we also provide them with the excellent instruction that in some cases really gets them excited about something that they may not have ever experienced. Certainly, you're not going to have an anthropology class in, in, in high school. Uh, you probably wouldn't have a philosophy class. And the various and sundry other areas that we, we touch on in gen ed really do make a difference ultimately in how they become more well-rounded citizens. Mm -hmm. um, so many years ago, when we, we took on the, the idea of, of, of the public affairs mission, uh, the president at the time really liked to emphasize, we want to graduate citizen scholars who can do more than just their own discipline. And I certainly applaud that. Uh, as far as how we also help other colleges, uh, we have a, a number of uh, multidisciplinary certificate programs uh, so that students would take courses in our areas and others and thereby create a package that would uh, enrich their educational experience and their resume. Uh, I'll give you one example. We have one in economics uh, that is really focused on uh, not only the, the basics of economics, but also agricultural economics. And the students who took that uh, have subsequently been able to find jobs much more quickly simply because of that cross-disciplinary approach. Okay, thank you, Dean Matthews. Um, you also talked a lot about experiential learning here and opportunities for students to, to, to leave Springfield and go and get their hands dirty, for lack of a better word, um, and walk walk the rocks right and, and well they and, physically and, get dirty i guarantee yeah yeah <laughs> and feel the terrain so thank you for lifting up those opportunities um to to our audience here and um and how would someone want to be engaged i can tell you when um, um we were at a maroon nation event early last month and, and folks went around and shared what the most meaningful moment for them and their student experience was and um there was an alumni there who she said her israel um, archaeological experience was defining for her and um, and, ch and changed her trajectory and, and what and what she, what it meant and what it um, and the and the academic experience for her. So um, clearly these these um, these moments and these experiences are are defining. And how can we how can we support? Well, uh, there are ways to create a, an endowed scholarship that mm -hmm. the foundation can certainly help people out with. Uh, but maybe one, maybe the first step would be to engage with me or with somebody in your shop about what area they have a passion about. Uh, because I'm not just asking people to give money in, in just in general ways. I want this to be something that they feel good about, that they think they should support, and that they think that students would benefit the most from. I mean, we, we have a lot of departmental scholarships, and I'm not knocking that at all because that's very, very helpful. Uh, but the areas that I'm targeting now kind of take us into another area uh, where we're we're supporting their uh, their step towards uh, employment, and that's a big deal these days. Okay, I'll have one more question uh, that I've thought of, but would love to hear from folks out there who may have additional questions, please type it into either the Q&A function or the chat. Um, but my, my, my last question for you, Dean Matthews, is um, the type of students that we're attracting at, at CHPA. And um, it, it is, um, we, um, you kind of alluded to the fact that 
as students come to the general education side of it, they may get turned on to something they had no idea that mm -hmm. um, that was an ish interest for them and a passion. Uh, so so who comes in initially and says, I want to be a CHPA, and then how does that conversion take place if someone says, no, nope, I went to UN, and now I want to be uh, – I want to go into federal service. Um, do you see that happen frequently? Um, it, and, it, depends, it... it depends on the department. Mm -hmm. uh, criminology gets a lot of majors initially. Um, there's a lot of different areas in criminal justice, whether it's the courts or law enforcement or, or uh, going to law school. That's, that's a choice that a lot of people make early on. Uh, but what I find is that in many of the other departments, uh, we get students on the rebound where we get them because they were excited about a course they took in gen ed. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody is going to come to college saying, I'm going to become an economist, mm -hmm. or very few anyway, or I'm going to become a philosopher. Uh, but when they take a course and they all of a sudden are energized by what they're hearing, they may well want to at least make that a minor. Uh, and I see a lot of business majors, for instance, who do take that economic side of it because they see it as a way of really enhancing their, their, uh, their resume. Um, we, because we see so many students, I mean, virtually every freshman is going to take classes in my college. Uh, we're going to get a lot of students who, who decide, hey, maybe that really wasn't for me. Well, I was one of those. I was going to be a chemist until I discovered what calculus was. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, the humanities looked a whole lot better. <laughs> D. Matthews, we have a question here from Jim Winfield, and um, he's curious if you have any early indication of how federal infrastructure funding may enhance the school. At this point, no. Uh, federal infrastructure uh, kinds of monies very seldom go to a college that is in the same character as mine, except in this way. Uh, I have a Center for Archaeological Research that's part of the college, and they live off of grants and contracts, and certainly as new roads or uh, new uh, bridges and so on are being constructed, they're going to have to do an environmental impact study, uh, and very often they bring in the archaeologists in case there is a Native American setting at that point as well. Uh, so. That would be the primary uh, focus, I think, for federal funds uh, in this college. Okay. And um, Jim, thanks for calling in from Joplin. Uh, good, good to good see plan. you. Yep. yep. Uh, any other questions out there? Well, I, well, if anybody does think of anything, please do type it in. I'm going to quickly introduce our Vice President of Advancement, Brent Dunn, um, who's with us. And Brent, if you wouldn't mind sharing a few words. Uh, thanks for being with us, sir. Well, I, I will reiterate uh, something that uh, Dean Matthews talked about. and I'm sort of a case study. I'm an alum of Missouri State, started off in electronic media, um, and, and I took my first sociology class, uh, which I didn't have in high school. Uh, Dr. Robin Munker uh, was the uh, professor, and that changed my major. And Vic is right. After taking that class, um, to me, somehow the world made sense in sociological terms. And uh, not that I was going to be a sociologist down the road, but did that help me do this job? Absolutely. Uh, and I became a sociology major and, and actually turned my whole academic career around. Uh, and starting off with uh, Dr. Amonker, who uh, was an inspiration, and like I said, the world seemed to make sense to me now uh, after taking that class. So uh, Dr. Matthews is exactly right. Uh, a lot of people uh, experience that, and certainly I did as well. Uh, Greg and Dr. Matthews referred to this Onward Upward campaign, and I'll just spend just a couple seconds on that. We're raising $250 million to change the institution. And we change that through uh, scholarship support, through program support, through faculty support, and capital support. Uh, $250 million is a lot of money, but it's not just to raise money, but it is to make a difference uh, in the lives of students and faculty and staff. Ultimately, 
that makes a difference in the world. And so one date I do want you to put down on your calendar, October 29th of this year. Uh, that's a very important date and you all are invited to a big celebration as we conclude the campaign. We opened it publicly on October 26th of 2019 and uh, coming to a conclusion uh, and John Goodman, uh, who's an alum uh, of Missouri State is our campaign chair. He will be, uh, as he did the kickoff, he will be with us in person on October 29th, a change in venue. We're doing this at JQH Arena uh, to allow for more and more people. We'll also be announcing um, a uh, recognizable uh, Grammy winning artist uh, that will be singing in that event. And of course the, the chorale, uh, the, the entire grand chorus, uh, which is 300 plus, uh, the 300 plus member marching band will participate. It's a show. Uh, but we're showing in this hour and examples of how the university changed because of some 60,000 donors uh, that, that made these changes possible over the face of the campaign. So doors will open at 7 o'clock, the show 7.30, it's only an hour show. That is homecoming week. Uh, so lots of fun stuff on campus, uh, the parade. Uh, the football game and all the other activities during that week. But again, please put down October 29th. Uh, that is a Saturday night, and uh, we'd love to have you all attend that. So, Greg, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Brent. Um, and for those of you with us, um, if, you, if there's any more questions for Dean, I'm going to, uh, for Dean Matthews, I'll wrap up real quick here and just share that we're gonna send a follow-up note out to everybody here who registered. Um, you'll be able to see the recording of this. Uh, Dean Matthews shared links on how to get involved with him. You're also welcome to respond to that note directly to us. And if anything you heard today inspired you and you wanna learn more about, we're happy to bridge that connection. By all means, do not hesitate to let us know how, you, how you'd like to be informed and engaged with the college. We're gonna be hiring new staff here at the Alumni Association, who's gonna be serving directly with our college and constituency programs. And, um, and so there's gonna be a bridge between the Alumni Association and what the colleges are doing to program for college alumni. Um, and so be on the lookout for that. Um, exciting times here at Missouri State and what we do and how we serve um, you, our alumni. Um, Dean Matthews, um, before I, I, um, I do my official close, is there anything else you'd like to share with, um, with the audience while while we're here. Just that I'm also looking forward to homecoming this year because I'll be one of the one of the golden bears. I graduated in 1972 and so I'm looking forward to having that distinction along with everything else I've done in my connection to the university. Well, Dean Matthews, uh, clearly you have a passion for this and have influenced and made an impact on so many lives. Well read with all of those books behind you. I'm not sure if you offered all of those, um, <laughs> um, but um, not quite. Um, but uh, you, you you certainly have made an impact not only here on Bears but but in the industry as a whole. So thank you for for uh, your service. Um, for those of you paying attention, next Wednesday I believe March 29th, um, Dean Barry Tinkler um, from the College of Education will will give her college conversation. Uh, so if you'd like to learn more about the College of Education. In Greenwood, among other things, please uh, tune into that conversation. Dean Matthews, thank you for your time. Again, to the alumni who tuned in, um, five states were represented on this call. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, and as always, go Bears. Thank you. You bet.